welcome back uh, to this new session. In the last session, we have uh, discussed about the peptide synthesis uh, and uh, the related issues. Okay. Now, we will go on to the uh, on to the structure of the peptides. Structure means that we have already covered the primary structure of a peptide or a protein. Lar large peptides are proteins. We have done the primary structure which again I repeat which meant the how the amino acids are linked to one another that is called amino acid sequence. Okay. Now, proteins uh, have a hierarchical structure that means th there are beyond primary there are other kinds of structure. So, first it is first layer of structural analysis is the primary structure that means the amino acid sequence. Then there comes the second second higher order and that is the called the second degree structure. Okay. If you look at the slides see this is the primary structure of a protein. Okay. These are these blocks are uh, representing one amino acid. Okay. So, that is the protein chain now. Now, this is primary structure. Then what happens as the protein is synthesized then it tries to fold at different locations and at different local points you will see different types of geometries. That means, the geometry or the three dimensional structure of the protein at different locations of the protein are not same. There are distinct features of, of structural patterns at different locations and some of these distinct features uh, are, are known you have already heard of them possibly that they are there are may be something which is called a helical structure like some portions of the protein may look like a helix as is shown here and uh, this is called alpha helix or some portion may look like what is called a beta sheet or some portion may look like a loop that means a kind of a, a, a kind of a turn shape u turn or some portion may be uh, completely random. So, all these possibilities are there. Now, these different geometries at, at different locations is what is called a secondary structure and here the definition is already uh, uh, given what is the secondary structure of a protein that is the local conformation that means, the local geometries uh, which are present in different locations of the protein entire protein molecule. And remember the primary structure is obtained by connection of the amino acids through peptide bonds. So, this is in the primary structure the peptide bonds that means, the covalent bonds are the important ones are the only ones to be considered the peptide bonds. In the secondary structure now you are not connecting any amino acids with each other what you are doing is that the protein is taking different shapes at different locations. Okay. So, what are those forces that stabilizes the different geometries at different locations and then those are primarily stabilized the primary stabilizing forces of this alpha helix or beta sheet or beta turn all these are by hydrogen bonding. Okay. This is remember in the uh, in the same molecule the hydrogen bonding is taking place intramolecular hydrogen bonding okay. and um, also it is intra strand hydrogen bonding if you talk the uh, if you take the alpha helix the hydrogen bonding is present within the strand itself. Okay. Beta sheet has a little bit different uh, connotation about the hydrogen bond, but the most important point is the force that plays a dominant role in forcing the protein to adopt different geometries at different locations are the hydrogen bonding. Okay. The hydrogen bonding between what? Between the NH and the CO. NH because we, ha we are having this hydrogen bonding donor that is the NH and the acceptor that is the carbonyl that means the amide bond those are the uh, points of interest for uh, considering the hydrogen bond. Now, after we analyze the 
local conformations, then comes the overall geometry of the molecule. E, this overall geometry uh, may take different shapes, but here we are not talking about local conformations. It is the end molecule in total, that means the, the molecule itself, what is the 3D geometry look like. Taking everything together, the beta sheet, the alpha helix, everything together. So, it is a complete three dimensional conformation of the molecule and that is what is called the tertiary structure. And there is one more layer that is called the quaternary structure. Quaternary structure is that sometimes some proteins they uh, can exist in more than one monomeric that uh, more than uh, monomeric form. That means, say one monomer can combine with another monomer to make a dimer or it could be a tetramer all sorts of possibilities are there. So, when the proteins a single molecular protein it also um, attaches through weak interactions to another protein molecule and present as an ensemble that is called the quaternary structure of the, uh, of the protein. So, quaternary structure means combination of multiple polypeptide chains. Each polypeptide chain represents uh, a protein. Now, this quaternary structure can be between the same polypeptide chains. In that case, if it is a dimer, then that will be called a homodimer. If that is between different polypeptide chains, that will be called a heterodimer. Okay. So, now we have all these four layers of structures. Primary is the first one. If you isolate a protein, the first thing you need to determine is its sequence. Once you know the sequence, the second layer comes that what are the local conformations at different positions. Then that is analyzed and then finally, uh, that is still not final. For some proteins which are only monomeric in nature, the up to tertiary structure that is the final but for proteins which are multimeric in nature, you have to go for the quaternary structure. Now, all these ones, the secondary, tertiary and quaternary weak forces, uh, weak forces uh, take the role to adopt particular geometries for the proteins and even to have multimeric nature of the proteins. Okay. So, the covalent bond formation is basically one the amide bond, but there is one more covalent bond we should be aware of and that is the cysteine molecule which has got a SH you know that is the sulfur containing amino acid with a free thiol group that can be easily oxidized to a disulfide. And if two cysteines happen to be very close by then what happens they can be oxidized and form a disulfide bond. So, the disulfide are the only other covalent bond that is possible in a protein structure apart from the amide uh, between the amino acids. Okay. Uh, other than that the disulfide, the disulfide plays a role in the tertiary structure and in the quaternary structure. Sometimes the tertiary structures are stabilized by formation of disulfide bonds. Suppose there is a cysteine here at this location and a cysteine at this location. If, so, they are close by. So, there may be a disulfide bond formation which holds these two parts together in this shape. Okay. And the disulfide can also be there between between the different monomeric forms to make the, the uh, multimeric ensemble that is also there. But apart from disulfide, leave aside disulfide, the others are all weak interactions, hydrogen bonds uh, in the secondary structure, in the tertiary structure, it is hydrophobic interactions, it is salt bridges and um, uh, it could be pi stacking interactions, all these things will be there. So, maybe go to the next slide. Let us talk about the secondary structure now. The secondary structure, as I told, it is the local conformations, okay. And there are distinct structural features that can be seen in a protein uh, if it look at different regions. The first one that 
strikes our mind. I think this is not the first one that strikes our mind. The first one that strikes our mind is the the helical form of the uh, of this protein chain. Now, by the way, this is first of all this is called a an alpha helix and this is right handed alpha helix. Now, whenever you draw this helix, there will be a n terminus at some point somewhere and a c terminus at the other end. In this case, this arrow is shown here n going to c that means, the n terminus is somewhere here and the c terminus is here. Okay. So, this helix is going from this direction to that direction from the n to the c terminus. Okay. Now, this is right handed right handed alpha helix. Okay. Now, in the I will show you also uh, in very simple models that uh, how does it really look. Uh, if you look from the top side or from, from different angles and uh, what is the driving force that that keeps it in this helical form. As I already said hydrogen bond is the driving force, but the question is which amino acid is is um, is forming hydrogen bond with which other amino acid. Because an amino acid here forms a hydrogen bond with the amino acid just at the top of it. No? If you take a line just at the top of it, it can make a hydrogen bond. If the orientations are are favorable like a carbonyl pointing downwards and then an NH pointing upwards that can form the hydrogen bond. So, basically now various questions that come first of all why it is forming this right handed alpha helix, okay. why not the left handed that is number 1. Number 2 is if we look from this side it is right handed helix whether it will be right handed if we look from this side or not. Okay. That is the second question. I have seen many students uh, uh, they face a difficulty they think that it is like a rotation of a fan that if the fan rotates uh, in an anti clockwise direction from the bottom then from the top if we see that will become clockwise, but in the helix interestingly it is not like that. It is right handed if we look from the bottom side it will be also right handed if we look from the top side. Okay. And then the question comes that what is the pitch of this This is now like a screw uh, what is the pitch of the screw pitch means that a point uh, pitch means a complete turn the distance that is traveled that if there is if you do a complete turn of a screw. So, here is the here the distance is basically between a point here and a point there that what is the distance. Okay. And then the next question is how many amino acids are there if we go from if we make a complete turn if we make a complete turn. Okay. So, these are some of the issues. Now, let us talk about uh, let us show you the the model. We can make a model of this even with very simple very simple things uh, aluminum foil I can make an alpha helix see this is um, maybe from this side yeah you look that this is an alpha helix and if you see from the middle you you can see that there is a there is an axis which is um, so, the helix is basically perpendicular to the helical axis. Okay. Now, the question is how do you know this is right handed or this is left handed because in the right handed screw what happens you push it in a in a clockwise direction. Okay. So, if you do that this is you also see here that as I do it it is going in this direction. So, this is a right handed helix and you will see from both sides it will be the same if you look from this side or if you look from the other side it will look like the same. So, the, it is a right handed helix. Now, what is holding these helix? You see these different different bonds here which are marked as red these are those hydrogen bonds. So, the hydrogen bonds are fixing the uh, are actually maintaining the helical shape of the of this polypeptide chain. Okay. So, these are the hydrogen bonds and what has been found that um, if the if, if if you think that this hydrogen 
the, the hydrogen bond contains a hydrogen and then nitrogen and a carbonyl which is the acceptor. So, if this is your first amino acid, first amino acid then the as you go to here that will be the fifth amino acid whose carbonyl will be coordinating with the NH. Okay. So, it is basically the hydrogen bond between if this is if you consider this is the first amino acid. So, after each fourth amino acid after each four amino acids you will have a hydrogen bond with the bottom one. Okay. I hope this is clear and then the distance between this and that that means, the pitch of the screw the pitch of the helix is 5.4 angstrom pitch of the helix is 5.4 angstrom and another thing you have to consider is that when you when you start from the carbon and from the nitrogen suppose then come to the alpha carbon of the of the amino acid then come to the carbonyl so there is a rise in the in the helix because it's not a, it's not a horizontal plane it is actually a spiral thing which is going slowly up okay so the question is if you the if you start from the nitrogen of an amino acid and go to the carbonyl how much rise it is how much you are elevating the surface and that is 1.5 angstrom okay so now we know that the pitch of the helix is 5.4 angstrom and the rise per amino acid is 1.5 angstrom so what will be the then number of amino acids in one complete term so that will be obtained by just 5.4 divided by 1.5 that is 3.6 roughly 3.6 amino acids per complete term okay again i just go back the questions uh, we have answered first of all that it is a right handed helix why it is right handed and not left handed because if it assumes this type of helical form then the one thing that is not shown here that is the substituents of the helix the amino acids the substituents can actually project out okay they cannot project inside because then there will be too much steric crowding so because they are in the l configuration that's why stereochemistry comes into play because they are in the l configuration the r group that means the side chain they are projected outwards of the helix okay so that's why uh, this can this is right handed helix now if it is um, it is only glycine which can which does not have any substituent so glycine is much more flexible that is not constraint to adopt this type of helical form okay and there is one more amino acid which is called proline proline because of the secondary nature of the amine it cannot participate in hydrogen bond because when it forms the amide bond with another amino acid the nh h is gone so it is no longer a hydrogen donor so proline and glycine they are exceptional amino acids glycine does not have any substituent so it is much more flexible so whenever you want to bring flexibility in a in a polypeptide chain you will see at that flexible region there are glycines and if you want to uh, bring in if you want to bring in uh, rigidity means if you want to disrupt this kind of this kind of system where which is trivialized by intramolecular hydrogen bond then proline cannot participate as i told so proline is basically is also called a helix breaker it breaks the it breaks the helix so if, if something some protein is going in a helical shape and then suddenly changes into another shape and that change over point proline may be present because proline is the one which does not allow uh, any helix formation okay now apart from this helix alpha helix right handed alpha helix there is another one which is also very interesting that is called that is the beta sheet structure what is the beta sheet structure that you have these are the amino acid planes this is the amino acid side chains 
these are pointing upwards and then upward and then downward. Downwards we have not uh, put any substituent here. So, when the ridge is on the top, then the R group is going to the top side. If the if the ridge means this these two surfaces are meeting that meeting point is is going downwards then the substituent will be on the left side okay so this is the uh, the beta sheet now these two beta sheets are actually interconnected by interconnected by hydrogen bond between the two between the two sheets so it is a it, it is basically now I have shown two sheets. Now, what is actually connecting these two sheets? The two sheets are connected by hydrogen bonds. So, this is the sheet st structure where the hydrogen bonds are like this. See, you see this is the extended form of the of the peptide of the polypeptide and N H is pointing downward, C O is pointing downward. What did I say that when this is this is the pointing upwards this carbon alpha carbon this is the R group going up and here where the R group R group is going below in this system and then it just alternates. So, C O N H then C O N H and if you have a very similar chain like this that there is a C O here N H here and then alternating C O N H is like that which are present in amino acids by the way. So, then what will happen this sheet can or this chain uh, and this chain can be interlocked by hydrogen bond which is which can form between this N H and C O. Okay. Now, this is by the way suppose this is your N terminus say suppose this is your N terminus okay, and this is your C terminus. So, that means, the direction of peptide bond peptide is generally we write from N to C. So, this is going from N to C and here also here you see the amine at this position and the carboxy at this position that means, this is the N terminus and this is the C terminus. So, here the direction of the peptide is N to C from this side. So, this is N to C from that side and this is N to C from this side. So, they are basically called anti parallel anti parallel chains okay? anti parallel uh, beta sheet also. And this can actually there may be other sheets or other chains that can also be linked to to this chain. See because here you see there is this N H and then followed by a carbonyl they are not coordinately saturated means their hydrogen bond capacity is still there that is not satisfied only this carbonyl this NH is satisfied then the next NH and CO they are still available for hydrogen bond. So, what can happen another chain can come on the top of it and then and then they can assemble that is what is called the beta the complete thing is called a beta sheet. So, beta sheet is nothing but you have first a, an extended chain of peptide then there is a somewhat some turn is there and then another extended sheet of peptide and then there will be intra inter chain hydrogen bond and then it can again take a turn and come to that side. So, basically if I draw it here what is happening that there is something like this. So, the beta sheet can be like this. So, there is hydrogen bond all this interlinked. Here I have only two chains in this model. In this model I have shown only two chains the two chains are here I think you can see. So, what I am saying see at the top there has to be a turn otherwise how can we get this sheet because if there is no turn then that will go to the top of it and there will be no hydrogen bond between interchains. So, there should be uh, a turn like system which are also called beta turns I will come to beta turns uh, 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 slightly later and then again there can be another beta turn and can one, this can form another layer 
of polypeptide and this can continue and this whole thing becomes a bundle a a bundle of uh, a large uh, sheet structure i s let me see whether it is here a large sheet structure possibly not there maybe next day i can show the this is the here it is ha, this is there this is the one which is the beta sheet here these are actually made up of one chain is like this going up and down up and down up and down then another chain in the middle going up and down and these chains are connected by hydrogen bond and then there is another chain ok now the difference between alpha and beta sheet what are the major differences one difference is we will come to that that is what are called phi and psi angles that is um, uh, that is uh, according to the Ramachandran plot we will come to that uh, a little bit later, but right now the difference is basically the phi and psi angles that is dictating this type of structure and the second one is also very important in alpha helix there is hydrogen bond within the helix within the same chain, but in beta sheet the hydrogen bond that is taking place is between the inter chain that means, it is the same molecule, but this part is not stabilized by hydrogen bond or this part is not stabilized by hydrogen bond. These two are interlinked by hydrogen bond from here to there from here to there. So, there are hydrogen bonds in between these chains. So, that is the major difference between these two and in fact, actually this beta sheet the hydrogen bond directions are very favorable. So, hydrogen bond strength are more in beta sheet than the alpha helix. So, the beta sheet structure is more stable than the alpha structure. However, this delicacy of alpha and beta their equilibrium from one to the other is a major is a major uh, issue in controlling the activity of the proteins that we have in our body. Okay. We will come to that when we discuss medicinal chemistry. Okay. So, that is um, the we have done the secondary structure, uh, then we, we talk about the, the bend, the, these are the loop or the bends, eh? these bends are what? Now, again I should say that there are parallel beta sheets also, parallel means you have n to c in this direction and n to c in this direction. If you want to have parallel sheet, then there should be two turns that you need. One is a turn on this side, the chain goes like this and then another turn and then the two directions become same n to c, but in order to have anti parallel, it will have it is just one turn, there is no crossover like this. Okay. And obviously, if you look at the structure of the two, here they are aligned perfectly perfectly well in H and C O, but here that alignment is not there. So, the anti parallel sheet is more stable than the parallel sheet, parallel beta sheet. Okay. Now, how to get this turn or what makes this turn? There are primarily two types of turns. The turns are one is uh, called, see this is a turn that this is amino acid 1 suppose, then amino acid 2, amino acid 3, amino acid 4. So, basically the peptide is now starting from here, it is going like this, this is the backbone and then it is taking a turn here. Okay. Now, in order to induce turn, again you should have a hydrogen bond and that hydrogen bond now is between the the first one, the first the carbonyl of the first amino acid and the NH of the fourth amino acid. So, it is I and if it is I, then this is I plus 3, because this may not, this is number 1, but this may not be the starting point of the peptide. That is why it is better that you say that this is the Ith amino acid and this is the I plus 3 amino acid. Okay. So, 
there is the formation of intramolecular hydrogen bond and if you calculate the size of this that will come to be 10 membered ring. So, because of the presence of this 10 membered hydrogen bonded network the chain takes a turn it was going in this direction and then ultimately comes uh, in the opposite direction. So, that induces the turn and there are two types of turns and these are actually again based on Ramachandran that phi and psi angles, but the most important aspect that what are the amino acids that can induce these turns. That means, the amino acids which does not give any stability to the alpha helix or the amino acids which does not give any stability to the beta sheet. Now, there are two ways to do that one is either devoid of the substituents amino acid is very flexible that is one possibility the other is amino acid has to be very rigid and devoid of hydrogen bonding capability and that is proline. So, you see in type 1 the number 2 amino acid that means the I plus 1 amino acid is proline and in type 2 turn the I plus I plus 2 this is now I plus 2 amino acid is glycine. You see this flexible this flexible amino acid makes the formation of the beta turn and the hydrogen bonding incapability of proline makes the uh, possibility of the type 1 beta turns. So, these are the major types other type other beta type uh, turns beta turns are there type 3 are there then type 2 a uh, 2a prime all these are there, but we just at this for our level I think this is okay that there are primarily these two type 1 and type 2 turns are present. Okay. So, so far uh, what we so this is sometimes also called beta bends beta turns beta bends or omega loop also it is called omega loop uh, it is also say that this is the beta sheet the sheet structure that was going in this direction and then it takes a turn and then the sheet structure goes in the opposite direction. So, that is the anti parallel. So, that is how the different sheets are connected. Okay. So, what are the characteristics of beta bends? First of all the it permits the change of direction of the peptide chain to get a folded structure. It gives the protein globularity that means, rather than linearity that means, now it, it can be a circular when you have a turn that means, it is going to a kind of a circular uh, direction. So, a globule is kind of a circular thing. So, the proteins generally try to adopt a globular shape and this turn structures assist the protein to adopt the globular stage. Hydrogen bond stabilizes the beta again hydrogen bond plays the dominant role proline and glycine are frequently found in beta turns. Beta turns often promote the formation of anti parallel beta sheets as I shown here occur at usually occur at protein surfaces not at inside and involve 4 successive amino acid residues okay, i and up to i plus 3. Okay. So, that is uh, that completes the secondary structure of protein. The tertiary structure this is a little bit easier tertiary structure as I said is the complete three dimensional structure of a single monomeric uh, protein molecule okay. and ultimately it can be a combination of alpha, uh, alpha helix some portion may be beta sheet some portion have loops and uh, incidentally now another class of proteins are there where some portion may be intrinsically disordered intrinsically disordered that means, they do not have any order they are vibrating from one geometry to another geometry. Uh, so, they are called intrinsically disordered, but they are uh, much less in number here uh, a major class of proteins actually have a well defined 3 D structures. Okay. These are the interactions that take place when a protein adopts the tertiary structure. Remember again the primary structure is stabilized by covalent bond, the secondary structure is stabilized by hydrogen bond, uh, it could be in the same 
same um, chain, it could be in the same uh, locality that means alpha helix have inter uh, intra chain or it could be inter chain and then in the tertiary structure this is stabilized again it could be stabilized by hydrogen bonding there are lots of hydrophobic interactions that means water repellent uh, groups or it could be salt bridges like if you have an aspartate or glutamate and if you have a lysine then lysine will be present in the biological pH as n h 3 plus this will be CO 2 minus. So, there can be electrostatic interaction that is sometimes called the uh, salt bridge formation and there can be also water plays a dominant role that in some of the pockets water may be there which also can participate in hydrogen bonds with the R groups. So, these are the stabilizing factor of the um, for the tertiary structure okay. and quaternary structure also are very similar uh, quaternary structures are stabilized by again hydrogen bond salt bridges uh, and disulfide. Uh, disulfide it is not mentioned here disulfides also can be uh, can is, is very important they have a very important role to play to give a well defined shape for the protein like a very simple example that some people have curly hair and some people have straight hair the people who have curly hair has lot of cysteines in their in their keratin okay and that cysteines they are they are actually present as disulfide. Now, when they are present in disulfide you get a bent shape. So, the, the hair becomes very curly. So, now there is a tradition that curly hairs can be straightened and how to do that you break those disulfide bonds with reagents with reducing agents and you break that bond and then um, make the hair straight. Okay. So, basically these disulfide bonds are also they play uh, their role in controlling the geometry of the tertiary as well as quaternary structure. Like in many antibodies which are also proteins there are a lot of disulfide bonds that um, stabilizes the monomeric systems. Okay. Thank you.